My name is Jan Christopher Horak, and I'm director of UCLA Film and Television Archive, which is the second largest moving image archive in the United States and one of the ten largest in the world. Mr. Horak, you're here today to talk about queer archives in the Queer Academy Conference. So my first question is, why is, why is it relevant to have queer archives? Why are they important? Um, queer archives are important because, of course, the images produced by LBGT people around the world uh, need to be saved. Many of these, especially since many of these films and videos, etc., are produced independently or as amateur films. And so there is not the kind of infrastructure to save that work as there is, for example, for big mainstream Hollywood films. And so for a very, very long time, motion, uh, moving image archives really did not focus or even think about the fact that, that uh, such an archive should come about. How would you describe the situation for queer archives at the moment? What do they contain? How, what does the network look like? How are they organized? Okay. Well, the UCLA Film and Television Archive has, for the past 12 years, uh, formed a cooperation with Outfest, which is the largest and oldest LBGT film festival in the world, based in Los Angeles. And with them, we founded in 2004 the um, Outfest UCLA Legacy Project uh, because Outfest, uh, from its founding, had simply collected a lot of films because people sent them in there for, to be shown. Not all of them were shown, but many of them actually stayed there. And then Outfest realized they had a re relatively significant collection but really couldn't take care of it. So uh, we've been working together with them. And since the founding of this archive, the collection has grown to 35,000 titles. And we are now the largest LBGT film archive and television archive in the world. Um, we collected not only the films from Outfest, but have gone and courted individual uh, filmmakers and also the estates of filmmakers. And over the past uh, years, we've also worked with Outfest to fundraise to begin preservation of these films. And as you know, here in Berlin, we premiered our restoration of Anders als die anderen, different from the others, from 1919, a film made in Germany, which is the, the first uh, LB, uh, gay fiction film in the history uh, uh, as, as far as we know. So you're not just an archive, but you also take care of the films in the sense that you well, do restorations and do you also make the movies accessible for the public? Absolutely. I think the, the importance of archives is not only to guarantee the long-term preservation of work, but also to make it uh, accessible. So uh, we have a film study center where many, many people come to do research uh, in uh, the Outfest archives. Um, we distribute films uh, throughout the world. Um, from the collections, and as I said, we have a continual effort to preserve films, so, um, and television shows. You're preserving movies, you are making them accessible for, for the public. Why is this important for society to keep queer archives alive and make them accessible? I think the LBGT movement has made significant gains in the past 15, 20 years, but there is still much work to be done. And I think the more images, not just gays and lesbians see, but you know, other uh, heterosexual people see, people in society see, the more willing I think society as a whole will be to accept uh, different forms of sexuality, and that's very important. So the, it, once these Im images come into continual circulation, they, uh, they take on a character of normalcy that they didn't have before, I think, at least not for straight society as a whole. And so that's, the, uh, that's a major reason for it, for, for 
projecting images out, but also because we are a historical archive to, for uh, gays and lesbians to see that there is a long history and that uh, these images uh, are there and, and also for, especially in countries where uh, gays and lesbians are still under a lot of pressure to realize, uh, for young uh, gay men and women to realize that, you know, there's nothing wrong. Now, we had a look at the, uh, well, at the past, how you are preserving things from the past, and we also talked about the situation now. What do you think are the challenges in the near future for queer archives, and especially for your queer archive? Well, our major challenge right now is that uh, we have uh, very quickly put together this huge collection, but um, archiving is, is very expensive and is, is, a, is a money pit. It's almost bottomless. And so, for example, while we have an inventory of the films, there are many, many films that uh, we haven't really cataloged yet, and therefore um, we don't really know what's in them because uh, the, fu we've, the funding for that kind of basic wor research work, even in the archive, to see what we have and to see whether these are unique materials or whether they exist elsewhere, that's work that needs to be done before we can begin the process even of preservation. So, you know, we're not blowing money on something that's already been done something somewhere else. The second challenge is that, you know, uh, we are now in a new digital world, and so we've been transitioning from, from analog media, like film and television, to digital media. And for, for us, that means that our long-term goal will be to put as many of these uh, films and television shows online so people can explore themselves. You know, the new model for an archive is not to have an archivist as a gatekeeper there who tells you what you can and can't watch, but for users to be able to explore themselves. And that's, that is the great advantage of digitality and the internet. And so we've started that process um, uh, just last year we put on 20 years of the groundbreaking LBGT television show from New York, In the Life, online, and now that's accessible to anyone to look and explore and, and see what was on, on that show. All right, thank you very much for this interview. And You're welcome. Have a lot of fun at the Queer Academy Conference. Thank you. <laughs>